Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> this is dear Mama Sal, who has made it her lifelong mission to remember not to stay at a motel in a small town again. Uh, let me think of the ways that I can tell you this. Um, it would start with the cleanliness level, or lack thereof. Um, now, I didn't know that I was actually a germaphobe, but apparently I'm getting close. Um, it was funny because a lot of things were immaculately clean, and then you looked at the door handle or the area around the door handle uh, to the bathroom and you went don't think I want to be touching that door handle um, or the dust on the walls behind the television set and then of course you start the most terrible thing which is you start touching things with your finger to see if there's a dust level there like maybe on top of the bed head wish I hadn't done that or um, at the base of the light, bedside light. Wish I hadn't done that either, that was even worse. Um, then, I mean, it was ridiculous. Once I started this, I, I got caught up in it. Yeah, it was like there was a plastic table, a sort of fold up one that you could put away. You know, people have them as sort of extra tables on their deck and so forth, a small one though. And I decided to take some toilet paper and some soap and see if I could get what the dirt level was on it. Wish I hadn't done that either. So <laughs> I'm now going to try and find breakfast. That's what I'm doing at the moment. By the way, I don't know about you, but even in a motel, I had expected to find um, Kleenex. Apparently I was wrong. Um, I also didn't bring any body lotion with me because, you know, they always have those little stupid bottles, don't they? No. <laughs> so I don't have any foundation. Because normally what I do is I take a touch of... Um, a touch of... body lotion and a um, little bit of bronzer and I'm good to go. So very very interesting times. So I'm sort of taking a circuitous, like in a circle, circuitous route around um, the town. And it's interesting, because I've heard a lot of people talk about maybe retiring here would not be high on my list. I have to tell you. Dirty great pulp mill, which I'm certain keeps people employed which is a good thing, um, but, you know, there is the aroma attached to pulp mills. And, um, generally, not my idea of fun. greasy spoon type place down here. Yeah, I had a look at the eating options in this town. Oh, there's a Tim Hortons. We like that. Didn't see that before. Huh. 
definitely will go to Tim Hortons for breakfast. They have clean food and they have great coffee, as you know. So that's good. I'm going to go and have some breakfast and then we'll talk some more on the way up. Bye bye. Sir. Well, we're on the road again. And hi everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal and this is now on my way to Kamloops. But I wanted to show you some of the scenery before I put the camera down because this is the uh, area where I did this cattle drive some years ago. The first one they ever had in this area. And it was amazing. Um, we literally rode, I can't remember how many head of cattle, for five days and ended up coming over the brow of a hill at sunrise with this whole herd, which meant the sun came up behind us. I mean, if you looked at the hill, the, um, the dust of, the, of all the hooves came up first against the skyline and then suddenly the silhouette of all the cows and then the drovers, the outriders, and then the rest of us following it. It was really very dramatic. And then what we did is we rode in a box formation, a sort of oblong box formation when we came into town. And we rode this whole herd through downtown Kamloops. Uh, well, it felt like downtown Kamloops. I'm not sure if it was. Um, but we rode them between us, if you like. So all the riders formed this oblong square on the outside. And then if any of the riders didn't keep up properly, you know, one of the cows would escape and then the drovers would do really fancy work and it was great audience stuff. I mean, great satisfaction from all the viewers. Um, and so it was really good. Ah, look at that. It's another chain up area, which means it's got a porta potty. Um, <laughs> I did like that. I've got a whole new experience now. And talking of that, um, I know I've mentioned it once before, at least, but my favorite memory of doing this trip was that for some reason I was considered a celebrity on this ride and I came, when we came into town, um, I was one of the front riders um, and I was carrying a flag um, and you know I think I was in like there were two rows of flag riders and personalities and so forth and I was in that group and carrying a flag which was great honor and um, the night before they had sent out the television cameras you know before we came over the rise the next morning um, they had sent out these ca television cameras the night before and I didn't know that it was live and that was my problem because I they asked me a question that I honestly answered but I thought that they would edit it out <laughs> But it was my honest answer. And the question, of course, was what was my fondest memory of the five days? And I said, well, after five days of being on horseback, the one thing I remember above all else is I never before realized you could get an erotic experience from seeing a porta potty. Um, it was just like, I had no idea it was live. <laughs> and then I went on to say all the wonderful, wonderful things that, you know, about the ride. But, um, yeah, I remember that really well. It was great for the guys because the trees were few and far between and slim, which was fine for guys, but it was not good for the girls. And so uh, the sight of a porta potty was just very much appreciated. The only reason I know it went out live, by the way, <laughs> is because people found me at home or left me emails and did all sorts of things and said, only you. <laughs> uh, 
um, but it was fun and they, they also knew um, because that's how I originally met them funny enough I was giving a, s a speech uh, one day uh, for the Chamber of Commerce or something up this way it must have been the start of Small Business Week or something like that but they'd invited me up to do the opening speech and I came up and there were these guys in 10 gallon hats now you know that part of me that's British goes you do not wear a hat inside gentlemen and so being who I am I turned to my host and I said okay who are the guys in the 10 gallon hats and they said oh they're from the cattle drive that's about to happen and I said a cattle drive Anyway, after I finished the speech, I moseyed, I think would be the right word, I moseyed over to where they were and said, okay, tell me about the drive. And they did, and I said, put my name down. And they said, what? I said, I'd like to do it, put my name down. It was blistering hot. Um, oh gosh, I'm not going to be able to convert this. Uh, lordy, lordy. Let me think. It was well into the 80s, if not 90s. I think that would be about right. Um, for those of you who've like to Google, it was over 40 degrees Celsius. It was hot. And my fondest memories of this whole trip, as I look at this area around here, was that, um, <laughs> you know, on the first day, you know, they bring in a big water truck so that we could uh, all wash. And you'd be amazed how well you wash, you know. Um, with a water truck, with everybody watching you. <laughs> it's quite interesting. Uh, actually, the trick is you take a bucket of water back to your tent and uh, do what you need to do. So then, the second day I noticed people were there, but not for as long. By the third day, people were there, but definitely not as long. And by the fourth day, we began to feel a bit like we were cowboys. <laughs> um, you know, the women were not washing their hair every day. <laughs> they, you know what I mean? There were lots of things going on that were really quite funny. And of course, being who I am, I was keeping track of all these things. Um, because to me, that's what makes it interesting. And that's why I wrote the speech about it. Uh, on the way back and I can remember that part of the speech was about this woman immaculate she really was she was on a white steed that's the only way you can say it this beautiful white horse it looked like it came out of a fairy tale and she was immaculately dressed in white as well well hello um, so you know that she didn't win a lot of friends at the get-go because this was definitely somebody who wanted a lot of attention and it was determined to get it. But anyway, never mind. Let me not be too judgmental on this one. But, sorry to tell this tale, but it was funny. <laughs> what about the third day, I think? Um, about the third day, we rode into um, a watering hole area. And we were in, you know, obviously the idea is to walk your horse into the lake and let them take on water because it'd be very hot. So, of course, we all did that, including Miss Pure White, Snow White, I'll call her now, um, including Snow White and the beautiful White Stallion. And then... <laughs> something went wrong don't know what it was that went wrong oh crud it's raining I bought my raincoat good girl so 
bare feet and raincoat. That's really good. Um, okay, so anyway, something went wrong and um, Snow White and her steed slipped going into the lake. And it got worse for some reason. The steed slipped seriously and fell over. <laughs> it fell over and dumped Snow White um, unceremoniously into the lake. And the, the horse came up looking like a paint pony. You know, it was black on the bottom half and dappled, you know, spotted on the top half. <laughs> And I don't want to tell you what she looked like. It was not pretty. And she was not amused. I want to tell you, I think there were about 250 of us riders on that particular um, cattle drive. We thought it was very amusing. Very amusing indeed. So, nice memory. And not only did we ride in blistering hot weather, we also rode in rain. Um, it, it was really incredibly arduous in terms of the weather. But that's why you remember it. You know, it's like I keep saying to you guys, you know, life is about memories, and I knew that would be a memory for a lifetime, and that's why I did it. But I can remember waking up this one morning where there had been torrential rain all night. Torrential rain. It's like it is right now. Anyway, um, and I was pretty sure that half of the city slickers didn't know not to have their luggage touching the canvas. Ooh, that's really bad right now. Um, I thought a lot of the city slickers, you know, who probably never camped before, didn't know to have, not, not to have anything touching the canvas because it was bleak then. And um, a lot of them came out of those tents that morning dripping wet. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Dripping wet, I mean, really horrific. And I actually was fairly well up on this hill where we'd all tented. They made us all pitch our tents on a hill, I guess because they knew it was going to rain. I don't know, but that's what we did. And I was pretty far up the hill, which was a good thing. Because as I came out to meet the sunrise, and I'm not a morning person, as you know, um, there were all sorts of bedraggled people beneath me, yeah, below where I was. And I just looked down on the, the sight of them all. And that's a horrible way to start your day. And then in my best speaker's voice, <laughs> projected right the way down the, the whole hill. Like it was the Sermon from the Mount, if you can imagine. Um, and then did this mini speech about what sort of day we were going to have was directly related to how we coped with this moment right now. And did anybody want to have fun today or were we just going to be drowned rats and be concerned about how we looked? And it was amazing the reaction that I got. I got a round of applause from you know, a lot of people. I got heckling of, we want to have fun. And, you know, it was, just, it, it was just a fun reaction. But of course, in doing that, uh, it cemented the fact that they did have a professional, spe a professional speaker um, on board. And 
so on the very last night we had a big um, dance type thing and they asked me and they had you know a couple of dignitaries there and then they asked me if I would do a speech on behalf of all the happy campers that had been on the drive and I did and I did one about some of the funniest moments I could remember um, including uh, one about myself where the horse they had given me had a problem uh, the second day out and I didn't know but there was a lot of discussion in the back about uh, who'd got a spare horse with them and one of the drovers you know, one of the people that had supplied horses for this thing did have a spare horse but it was basically pretty untrained i.e. it wasn't used to having people on its back a whole lot. And then, I mean, I heard about this afterwards. I didn't know about it at the time. And then the, the, the RCMP guy, who was also on the ride with us, he said, um, how, how trained is it? Has it ever had a rider on its back? And they said, well, yeah, once or twice. But it doesn't like having riders on its back. In other words, it's going to back and do things and the RCMP said and the person we, you want to give this horse to is Sal the city slicker the speaker and the drover said yeah that, that, that's who we that's the one who's going to be without a horse unless we find one for her. and the RCMP guy looked at him and said give her the horse by the time she's finished, this will be a dressage horse. But they didn't tell me quite the truth. They said to me, oh Sal, um, we're giving you Betsy May or whatever they called it. <laughs> and it was a ridiculous name that they decided to call this wild horse. Um, and just to let you know, um, she's a bit fresh. I think that's what they said. She is a bit fresh. And I went, oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I should have known the way they all moved away from me once they got me loaded up that there was a problem. And the next thing we know, Betsy May is busy doing her bucking bronco routine. And I'm afraid that I, in turn, did my best imitation of a bronco rider in the local um, rodeo show. Because I hung on for dear life in, in, with my knees and my thighs. But I want to tell you, this guy should not be in the fast lane. Okay, anyway, so every time that he landed, I put my heels into him hard. And I guess he did it about 10 times. He was good, actually. And I, luckily, I was still fairly fit in those days. Um, but after about the 10th time, he gave up. And just walked forward. I made a lot of fans that day. There were a lot of people that <laughs> had me on their A-list for entertainment. <laughs> I did come across the um, RCMP guy after I heard the story. I said, I believe I have you to thank. <laughs> he said, yeah. And I said, what made you think I could cope with a bucking bronco? And he said, I saw the way you ride. And I said, of people who ride he said yes but there are not a lot of people that ride the way you ride he said you, you've seriously ridden horses and I said actually it's quite funny I mean you probably all know about the RCMP and their musical ride well as a child I actually was in a huge musical ride 
uh, that went around the country uh, in the summer to all the big um, agricultural shows and, and did these demonstrations. And in fact, I was better than part of the ride. I was the comedy routine at the end of it. You know, there were all these beautiful fancy horses at the front and then they went down in, in size and dignity, I think. And then right at the end, there was Sal. On a sort of, a little bit bigger than you can imagine Shetland Pony, but it was bigger than that. But it was small by comparison to the ones up front. And the whole thing was that, um, the whole, ride was designed to be very clever, you know, with crisscross jumping and all sorts of things, and then very funny. And guess who the very funny was? You know, we'd be doing the big wheel with all 36 horses. <laughs> and instead of having me right in the middle, where I'd have to do the least work, they'd have me on the outside of the big thoroughbreds which meant that I had to be doing basically a gallop around to try and keep up, and I never could. <laughs> which was very entertaining for the crowds. Um, and I'd be doing sort of my Annie Oakley routine, trying to gallop my way into line and never making it. Um, but it was really fun. So yes, for those of you who didn't know, I spent a lot of my life on horses. And... Uh, I really have great memories of those days. Had a lot of accidents, I must admit, but also had a lot of fun. So very, very uh, grateful for it all. But one of the best was this town I'm coming into right now, is coming into Kamloops. We crossed, um, crossed over, I think it was called the Red Bridge, guess what color it was, um, and then into the rail yards where, where the cattle were put onto the cattle trucks. memories. Actually, the reason I stopped there, I was trying to remember how we fed them. But I, now that I think about it, as we hit each stop at night, we had um, pay and all sorts of things. Anyway, so that's my story about this area. I'm going to start concentrating again. I don't miss this turn off, which I would imagine will be coming up fairly soon. Very pretty area. Okay, bye bye for now. Well, just after I said that, came around a corner and there was a rest stop, but I want to show you why I actually stopped. Have a look at this. Isn't this absolutely magnificent? What an incredible view from a rest stop. And this is the road I've been traveling that you can see winding through the valley there. And uh, those rolling hills are the ones I've come over. Just amazing. And that big house I was talking about, I wonder if I can get closer to it. The sun's in a very bad place for me to be able to see this. I know I said I wasn't going to do this zooming thing again. Where is that house? Oh, yeah. 
Well, I was watching a train on the other side of the lake there. And then it was really quite peculiar because then I saw this sign. Caution, there may be rattlesnakes in this area. Um, I'll be leaving now. <laughs> Bye.